Hey everybody, I'm Aaron Simmons. This is Philosophy for Where We Find Ourselves, April 17th, 2023. So I'm sitting outside today at my house and the weather is absolutely stunning. There is not a cloud in the sky and the humidity is low and the wind just continues to blow around me. And so if the wind uh, gets too loud, I apologize. It's gonna mess up the audio. But rather than go inside, I figured, you know, we all have to bite bullets in life and in arguments. And I would rather be outside in the midst of this beautiful weather, even if it means that my audio may not be as on point as I would like it. So let me apologize in advance if a gust of wind comes through. Uh, maybe we'll just let it blow and enjoy the sound of the wind for a second. Well, today I am uh, here to think with you and encourage you. And so I have actually just a sort of little idea that I want to present. And it was inspired less by a philosopher and more by a flower. Today I was walking onto the campus of the university where I teach and saw this flower. And it was growing right between the crack, between the curb and the paved asphalt of the road. I cannot imagine how a seed got down in there. I have no idea how it was able to find enough soil to be able to grow. And yet, not only did it grow, but it then blossomed. It bloomed. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, this is absolutely stunning. It caused me to stop to take a picture. And I wanted to share with you and invite you to think with me about what it might philosophically teach us. Soren Kierkegaard says that we've got to learn from the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. Of course, he's quoting the Bible when he says that. But today, I want to invite you to learn with me from this little flower. I think there's three things that we can learn. First is the ability, it might be trite, but to grow where we're planted. Now, I know that this is something that we see all over the place. It's on aprons, it's on, you know, gloves for working in the garden. But there's something powerful and philosophically robust in this idea. Growing where you're planted means being able to recognize that even when things are rough, it is possible to flourish. This is effectively the fundamental idea of existential philosophy as such. That no matter what's going on, our freedom remains intact, our agency remains in place. It's also a stoic idea that uh, regardless of what the circumstances are, we have the ability to be rationally engaged and invested in what really matters regardless of our situation. Grow where we're planted. Two, it makes me think about the philosopher Camus when he describes Sisyphus pushing his rock up that hill. What could be more despairing, more exhausting, more useless, more futile? And yet he says that by pushing his rock up the hill, this is what allows Sisyphus to triumph over the gods. And by this, Camus means that it's not in spite necessarily, but it is in protest to the meaninglessness that he was supposed to face, the absurdity of his condition, in that very meaninglessness, in that absurdity, he was able to make meaning by willing himself where he is. That idea of being able to flourish in spite of what might have been meant for our harm, there's something that I think the flower teaches us. What could be more inhospitable than a bunch of asphalt and then a bunch of concrete. And yet the flower finds its way to show up and says, hey, I'm gonna show y'all something. Maybe we can learn something from Sisyphus pushing his rock and that flower pushing through rock in order to shine forth in beauty. And the third idea that I want to propose that we can learn from this flower is actually an idea that I think we can get from Anne Lamott. She says that we should be where our feet are. And by this, I want to suggest that when I saw this flower, it would be very easy to ignore it, to move past it, maybe not even to attend to it in the first place. But the fact that it stood out against its background allowed me to stop what I was doing, interrupted where I was going, and be where my feet were. To look down and see what's going on. Or as Lamont says, go outside and look up. 
be aware that there's more in the world than we might imagine. David Foster Wallace suggests that this is effectively the idea that the obvious is not so obvious after all, that philosophy invites us to take seriously what everybody else takes for granted. When we are where our feet are, when we recognize that we can stand here and there's something magical, something beautiful, something worthwhile, wherever we are, Maybe that calls us to rethink how we pay attention, to change our focus, change our perspective, dig deeper into what we would maybe otherwise miss. Maybe these three ideas are trivial to you. Maybe you already are aware of all of them. But for me, all three really came flooding to mind as I saw that flower popping through the asphalt. Ah, uh, there's the wind. I'm sure you guys can hear it because my uh, audio is probably going to crap right now. But even as the wind blows, it causes me to rethink what I'm saying, to readjust my focus, to slow down, pay attention differently, just like that flower. So whatever it is, whether it be the lilies of the field, the birds of the air, or even the gust of wind, be reflective, be intentional, and pay attention to where you are because it might well be a place worth being if we just changed our focus and appreciated it. I'll see you next time, unless a piano falls on our heads.